So let's do a little bit of work on this um, side side angle case, some kind, sometimes called angle side side. Um, and this would be the case where you know a side, an adjacent side, and the angle that's not between them. And notice we call it that because the order in which we know things. Now this is not drawn to scale, and I was going to solve this triangle, right? I was going to find all the missing sides of it. That's what it means to solve a triangle. So working on solving uh, this triangle, there's two approaches I can do. Um, one of them is to use log cosines, or I'm just going to call this side C. And if I use log cosines, it's going to give me all my answers. So for example, if I set up uh, log cosines with this one, remember log cosines is this sort of setup, where I have side angle side and then the side opposite. So I would have um, 50 squared equals 80 squared plus C squared, looks like Pythagorean theorem, with that patch minus two times the two sides that surround the angle times cosine of the angle. And so now that I have that, notice I have a quadratic here, right? I have this, whoops, I have this uh, C squared term here, and then I have this C term here. So I have a quadratic to solve. Um, so I'm going to get it into that form. So I have C squared minus two times 80 times the cosine of 26 degrees, that's all a number, times C, plus, and then I have this 80 squared, and I can subtract, subtract this 50 squared from both sides. So minus 50 squared. And so notice I have this quadratic, and I have that C, you know, it's just really what I'm solving for. I could call it X or whatever. Um, but I have a quadratic where my A value is one, my B value is this right here, and my C value is this. Like that's what I'm going to plug into my quadratic formula. So if I do that, let me bring up a calculator. So 80 and 26, 80 and 50. So I'm just going to go use my quadratic formula program on my calculator. A was 1. B was, I think, negative 2 times 80 times the cosine of 26 degrees. Uh, hopefully I'm in degrees. We'll find out. Um, and then C was, I think it was 80 squared minus 50 squared. So 80 squared minus 50 squared. Plug all those in. I get these values. Um, 107.54 about and about 36.26. Let's say I just want to check those values. Um, negative 2 times 80 cosine 26. Yep, 80 squared minus 50 squared. Yes, absolutely. Oh, I just noticed I put those as degrees and it should have been squared. You probably caught that um, and I didn't. Great, so my values then C equals 107.54 about and 36.26 about. Now be careful what this is. These are not angles. These are the side C. So that would mean I have uh, two cases where this is 80, this is 50, this is 26 degrees. One where this side length is 107.54 and the other would be this uh, obtuse case where this is 50, this is 80, this is 26 and then this here would be 36.26. And now what I would do to find out the rest of these uh, to get this angle and this angle, I'd use law sines to get those. So that's one way to do it. Law cosines will always give me um, the right number of answers and it's it always works. Now, what if I decided I was going to try and solve this using law of sines? So if I do that, 80, 50, 26 degrees, And let's just go, I'll just call this side B, uh, the angle B, sorry, and I want to find that angle first. So instead of finding the side first using law of cosines, I'm going to find this angle uh, B first using law of sines. So notice it would be something like uh, sine B over 80 equals sine 26 over 50, multiply both sides by 80, sine B equals 80 times sine 26 over 50 and if I do that 
on my calculator. I'm gonna I'm gonna end up going arc sine, right? Like inverse sine eighty sine twenty six over fifty. So I'll go inverse sine of 80 times sine of 26. So 80 sine 26. Close off the parentheses just for that. And then I'm going to divide that by 50. And notice what it does is it spits out this 44.5, this 44.54 um, angle. So let me take a look at that 44.54. So B is about 44.54. So um, if I do law of sines, notice it just gives me one answer. We've talked about, we've talked about why that's the case, because inverse sine can only return values between um, negative, negative 180 and 180, right? First and, first and uh, fourth quadrant only. So what I need to do in this SSA case is I need to see if there's another possibility. So one of my triangles is going to be 26 degrees, 50, 80, 44.54 degrees, and then I could figure out what that angle is, use law of sines to get that. Now, let me draw that, write that semi-legibly, 44.54 degrees. Now my other possibility I know would look like this, if it exists. Right, I know that it would be an obtuse angle. So this would be um, 80, this would be 50, this is still 26. And notice what happened was this side right here, this 50, swung over and closed up there. So if this is 44.54, so is this, because these two sides are equal to each other, 44.54. So that means that this would be uh, 180 minus that, right? It would be because they make a linear pair. So 180 minus 44.54. Let me just do that on my calculator real quick because I am too lazy to actually just try it in my head. Uh, 180 minus 44.54 is 135.46. So this would be uh, 135.46. And the only thing I need to do is check and make sure that that would actually make a triangle. In other words, if I go 135.46 plus 26, I get 161.46. I still have in my 180 room for an angle to be here. So I'll go 180 minus the sum of those. And that means that that angle would be 18.54 degrees. And then I have my two triangles that, to solve. So first point, if I have an SSA case, if I use law of cosines, it's going to give me both the answers. It give me sides. And I'll have to use law of sines more to get the other two angles, but that's okay. I know there's two of them. If I use law of sines, it will only give me one angle. And what I have to do is then sketch the other one and see if it's a possible triangle. If it is, I still have my two cases. I can use law of sines again to get the missing sides. So let me do another, another case um, with both of these methods to see, see where they lead us. Um, so, you know, the point is you really can do whichever method you want. You just need to know how to interpret your results. Let's say that's 80, that's 90. I want to find this. I want to solve the whole triangle. And this is still an SSA case. I want to solve the whole triangle. That means find all the angles, find all the side lengths. But I'm going to use log cosines to find this first. So let me set this up. Um, remember log cosines, two sides and the angle between them compared to the angle opposite. So I'm going to treat it like it is a Pythagorean theorem. 90 squared, not degrees, equals 80 squared plus x squared minus that patch 2 times 80 times x times cosine of 26 degrees. I'm going to clean it up so it's in Pythagorean, I'm not Pythagorean, but um, quadratic form. I'm going to subtract that 90 squared from both sides. I have x squared minus 2 times 80 times cosine of 26x. And then notice it's plus 80 squared minus 90 squared. So there's my C value, there's my B value, and my A value is one. So let me bring it up on a calculator then. This is, I'm just doing this so I can peek at my values. 
So I want to use a quadratic formula. I'm going to go into my, I could do this by hand if I didn't have my calculator. You know, let's see, A was 1. Uh, what were those other values? B is negative 2 times 80 cosine 26. Negative 2 times 80 cosine of 26. And then if I remember, C was like 80 squared minus 90 squared. Yeah, 80 squared minus 90 squared. Uh, did I do degrees again there? Jeez, what is wrong with me? 80 squared minus 90 squared. So notice my two answers, 154.78. Okay, good. That's a, that's a side, so that makes sense to me. But then it spits out uh, 0 0.79. But then it spits out this negative value. I'm going to throw that out. It doesn't make sense for me to have a negative value in a triangle. So a lot of cosines tells me right away I only have one case. Um, and that is where this side right here is uh, whatever it was, whatever the value was. Uh, 158.79. So this is a case where I only have uh, one triangle. Put that there, and then I can use law of sines to get to get at my other angles. What had happened if I tried to solve this with law of sines? So, what a great question. Let me try it. 90, 80, 26 degrees. Let's call this B. Uh, law of sines, remember law of sines is about this ratio comparison across. So I'll say sine of angle B divided by side 80 would be the same as sine of 26 degrees divided by 90. Multiply both sides by 80. Sine of B would be 80. Sine 26 degrees over 90. And on my calculator, I'm going to go inverse sine of that. So 80 sine 26 over 90. inverse sine of the sine of 80 uh, sine 26. Oh no, there's an extra sign in there, sorry. I'm going to delete that. Inverse sine of 80 times sine of 26 degrees. Close off that parentheses. And that was divided by, uh, what was it divided by? 90 or something? Oh, I'm impatient. Divided by 90. And it gives me 22.93 degrees. Okay, so let's let's deal with that. Um, 22.93 degrees. Yep. So that means I know one of my triangles. That's a 26 degrees. This is a 22.93 degrees. This is 80 this is 90. Feel good about that. Now, if I if I try to um, make an obtuse version of this, where this is 26, 80, 90, I'm saying that that 90 swung over like this. And notice this angle in here would be that 22.93. Now, if I go 180 uh, minus that, 180 minus 22.93, I get 157, about 157 degrees. And now if I go to find this angle, these have to add to 180. But if I add 26 and 157, I'm already past 180. So this would be an impossible triangle. So see how with law of sines, if I do my check, I can see that there's only one answer. Law of cosines gives it to me absolutely without any question. Let me do one more example. And it's going to look like this. Uh, 26 degrees again. Boop, boop, boop. 80, 30. And angle, angle, side situation. So I can either go law of sines or I could go law of cosines. I'll do law of cosines first. Remember law of cosines is this right here. So 30 squared would equal 80 squared plus x squared, just like the Pythagorean theorem, but with a fix, minus 2 times 80 times x times the cosine of 26 degrees. And now I'm going to get that into quadratic form. So I've got an x squared 
I've got a negative 2 times 80 times cosine of 26 degrees times x. And then I've got an 80 squared. Uh, subtract that 30 squared. Bring it over. Minus 30 squared. Ah, I got squared right that time. And I'm going to shove that thing into uh, my calculator. 80, 26, 80 minus 30. One, negative two times 80 times cosine of 26. And then I think it was 80 squared minus 30 squared. Non real answer. No solution. I could have gotten two negatives too, and I would have had a similar conclusion. But notice that what is happening is there's no such triangle. And law of cosines just gave it to me. Now, if I decide to go the other route, if I decide to go the law of sines route, I'm going to get a similar result. 26 degrees. Let's call this B. So remember law of sines, ratios, opposite ratios. So sine B over 80. Ack is equal to sine 26 over 30. Multiply both sides by 80. Sine of B equals 80. Sine 26 degrees divided by 30. So I'm going to go inverse sine of that. Eighty sine twenty six divided by thirty. So inverse sine of eighty times the sine of twenty six degrees. Close off the parentheses. Divided by thirty. Domain error. Same sort of thing. So no such triangle. So they would both show me right away that there is no such triangle. Now hopefully what you're thinking is I can use law of cosines if I want. And it'll give me answers right away. I can use law of signs if I want, but I have to do a little bit of interpreting of the solutions to, um, to see if there's zero, one, or two triangles. All right. Good luck. Make sure you check in solutions. And um, you got this.